Hello and welcome to Inside EVs. You join me here in Detroit, Michigan with this, the electric Mustang Mach-E. And in this video, I'm gonna take you on a tour of the Mustang, show you all around it, every button switch system thing, and we're just gonna go dive deep into this electric Mustang. Now I can't quite tell you how this car drives or any of the functionality, but you better believe we are gonna be doing all of our standard tests with this vehicle in the future. So we're gonna be doing a DC charging test. Will it actually hit the 150 kilowatt charge rate? Will it hold it for a long period of time? And we're also going to see the 70 mile per hour highway range. Now we only have the car for the day today. It's freezing cold and sort of raining, snowing. So we're probably not gonna do the testing today, but stay tuned to our channel, subscribe to Inside EVs US for more because we have a lot of testing to do on this. Now, let me take you around the new electric Mustang Mach E and we'll start with some figures right off the bat. So, $42,000 base price or so goes up to 60 for the GT. There's tons of options in the middle. You have select, premium, uh, first edition, California Route 1, GT. And this one is the first edition. This is an early car. It has the extended range battery with the all wheel drive system. So it's about 270 miles of EPA range with all wheel drive. You can also option this car in a rear wheel drive configuration and that gets you 300 miles of EPA range. Those figures were just announced and it's great that Ford was able to meet their targeted range. Actually, everything Ford has done with this car up to this point has met or exceeded the original promised specs. It's faster from when it originally launched, it's less expensive, and everything about this car has been under promise and over deliver. So I, I've been pretty impressed. We'll start here at the back. You can see the tail lights. I'm gonna click the hazard buttons really quick just so you can see what those look like. Uh, because everyone will want to know what the hazards look like. And so here you go. There is uh, not so much of a sequential on these three, but you also get a little sequential here on the, on the turn off instead of the on. So we have very weird FMVSS, Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standards here in the US that regulate lighting in a very odd way. So we don't get all the cool Euro stuff. Well, it'll be interesting to see if the Euro spec Mustang Mach-E has all the nice swoopy lights and stuff. Uh, this is the new Mustang badge, or I should say the same Mustang badge, but a little bit textured to represent the, the electric Mustang Mach-E. Of course, this is the first Mustang without tailpipes. Now I can't tell you how this car drives yet. It's a couple weeks away, but we are going to find out later today if this car truly has the soul of a Mustang. And I'm very excited to find out to see how good it is in those situations. Should it have the Mustang badge or not? We're gonna find that out, so stay tuned. Uh, you can see underneath the trunk, you have a partition here. The, the fastback nature of this car, the sloping back, means the height here isn't that high. However, it increases very quickly when you get to the back seats here because, come around the side here and let me show you, this is a cool little design trick Ford has played on us. You can see the fastback nature here slopes down and it's actually probably easier if I show you with the trunk down. You can also kick underneath the trunk with your foot to open and close. But the roof in fact actually continues across this way. It just doesn't look like it because it's painted black. So especially at night, it looks like this is the true hard body line. It makes it look really cool. And for those that know me, you know I'm not a huge fan of this new coupe SUV styling trend, but this seems to play it off really nicely. Now, typically we start at the front of the car and work our way backwards. Why we aren't doing that now, I'm not sure. Let's take a look at the front. Let's open up the front trunk. It's a double pull on the latch here, sort of like uh, some other vehicle brands that we're used to and that means you can just lift it straight up from there. Now here is your front trunk. You have the little kidnapping button right here and it literally has a picture of someone escaping from the front trunk, which is really funny. And um, I, you know, not funny if you're in that situation, but, but I don't know any normal sized person that's gonna fit in here. Uh, but it is a, a pretty big front trunk. It looks like this partition here is removable with just a couple rivets or these plastic rivet things. Um, but honestly, I would just leave it in. I'd put a charging cable here. I'd put a roadside assistance kit, 
some MREs in case you get stuck somewhere. No, I'm joking. Uh, you could just put whatever you want there. It's pretty great. And then uh, you have the Mustang badge here. I'd love for someone to count all of the Mustang badges on the car and tally them up. I'm sure they're hidden around in fun places. Let's close the front trunk. We're just going to let it sit here and I'm going to do the, the other thing where I, okay, you just close it like a normal hood. Makes sense. Uh, under here though, you'll see it's cold, so the flaps are closed, but these actually open up for increased cooling. You also have your little radar behind there. You have your camera system for the driver assistance tech. And let's talk about the driver assistance. We're up here, we'll talk about everything like this. So what can the car do for you on the road? Well, uh, if you option the uh, prep package for the adaptive systems, I forget exactly what it's called, but someone will comment with it. You will have the option to have adaptive cruise control, lane centering, all with Copilot 360. But as a software upgrade in the future, you'll actually get hands-free driving. So the car will use uh, eye tracking for driver monitoring and it will see through sunglasses, they say. I can't wait to try it out. And it means on pre-mapped highways, which is pretty much any major highway in the US, you can just sit there like this and let the car drive down the road by itself. Now you still will have to pay attention and maintain control. This is purely driver assistance, not full self-driving, uh, but it is a great step in the direction of driver monitoring where you can not only use a torque sensor on the wheel to measure if a human's paying attention behind the wheel, but you can use eye tracking. And then there's a whole bunch. We can have a whole conversation about driver monitoring, but come around the side with me. Awesome headlights here. These things are crazy bright. We tried these out last night and man, they are insanely bright. Very cool headlights. And I think they look nice as well. These wheels are uh, part of the first edition, has red brake calipers, of course. This car is featured in Grabber Blue. I actually don't know what size these wheels are. They're on Michelin tires and they are, I'm guessing 19s. Uh, I can't see where they say. Da, 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 da. Yep, 19s. So uh, that seems to be pretty good. The badging and nomenclature on Mustang Mach-E. Let me walk you through this really quick as well. On the side, if you see Mach-E, that means it's just the standard one. If you see Mach-E 4, it's a dual motor all wheel drive configuration. If you see the X, it means it's the big battery. So X is extended range, I guess is what X stands for extended. Four is the dual motor. So that's, that's where that comes from. Now, <laughs> we've seen the exterior of the car, has a glass roof, shark fin on the top. It's really cool. This is really interesting. Every car has its unique door handles in the electric segment, it seems, and this is no exception. And the door handle is this, this little button right here. And we were talking to some of the engineers yesterday about this car, and they claim that this little bump here actually makes zero difference on aero because of the way the air comes around the mirrors. And of course, we don't have digital mirrors in the US. I don't think the Euro version is getting this either. All you have to do is push this little button. It pops the door open to about here. You can see I can't close it now. And so I can put my hand behind here and you know it's not gonna get jammed. And then I just pull it open and the little pusher latch that pushes the door open goes back in. And I believe that's this piece right here uh, it's a little icebreaker thing. And this system was tested to minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit or Celsius. I believe they're the same at that temperature. So all you do is you push this little button and then you pull the door open. But what I found is actually easier is if you just touch the door handle here, hit the button and open the door. It's super intuitive, works a lot better. Also in cold temperatures with snow and ice, this is a much better solution than some of the handles that have to pop in and out of a car and uh, this is just purely an aero advantage. Now on the rear, there's no handle. So you push the button and then you reach behind the door. Again, same thing with the ice popper. I cannot close the door. Oh, I can if you push it really hard. But now what I'm gonna do, close the door, hit the popper, open it up, and you can see this sort of rubbery material behind the door. And that seems to work pretty well for you. It might be something that you have to explain if you're an Uber is <laughs> getting in your car. You have to say, hit the little button, hit the button. What button? You hit this and then you open the door. It's simple once you do it for the first time, but it will require an upfront explanation. So that is the outside and the tour of the Mustang Mach-E. I'm excited to show you the inside because I am frozen. And um, 
before we do that, I do want to talk range. This is so important for EV owners. I already touched on the fact that 300 miles of range in the rear wheel drive extended range pack, but one thing I'm really curious about is the efficiency of this vehicle. Because the Mustang Mach-E has a 99 kilowatt hour battery pack installed capacity, they only let you use 88 of that, so it's 88 kilowatt hour usable. I gather two things from this. One, it's really gonna protect the life of the battery, right? Because you're never gonna be fully discharging it or fully charging it, there's gonna be a buffer. Ford also is recommending, you know, only charge it to 80% on DC fast chargers. And, and that makes sense. You can do 100% charge, no problem, but they're really gonna slow you down. So we're gonna do a full charging curve test that we, I actually don't know what it is. We haven't done the test yet, um, but we're gonna do that later today just to see how this car charges. And you're gonna have to stay tuned until December for that. So is it something that Ford may unlock more battery capacity in the future and find different improvements that they can make to the car over time? The answer is we're not sure yet, but at least the capability is there. Almost every module on this vehicle can be updated over the air. So we're used to this with some other electric vehicles. This car will get better over time. And I think they're starting out, my feeling is they're starting out very conservatively with these vehicles and it's only gonna get better. Now I have the Mustang's key on me here, and when I approach the vehicle, the headlights turn on, the accessory lighting turns on, and we're gonna get inside. So I'm gonna use this cool door handle to get in. Really nice, solid feeling door handle. Let's try out the door closing, I always do this. Real solid thunk, that's good, um, like that. And first off, these materials are really nice. I love this, uh, this felt covering over the Bang & Olufsen sound system here. Sounds really nice. And we'll get in and I'll tell you about the car. It's freezing. So let's hop in the Mustang. So, wow. <laughs> First off, you notice this car feels really sporty and it feels similar to a Focus RS that, that we drive quite often. And, um, and that's good. It means there's consistency across the Ford lineup. So the pedals, you get in, put your foot on the brake, click the start button, and now the car is on. That's it, no noise, no clicking, no weird noises or anything. It just is on. Now on the door panel over here, we have a couple buttons. I'm gonna walk you through all the buttons like I promised. You have unlock and lock, three memory seating positions that are also tied to your user profile. You have your mirrors folding and your child lock for the rear. You have your mirror adjustments and four windows. All are power and they are all sort of that double notchy, so it's one click up and down. I think they call it express up and down. Uh, the door opening is this little latch. It's sort of electronic. It just sends the signal, it feels like. Yeah, and it just pushes the door open, but it's kind of a cool cool thing to pull on. I like that a lot. These leather surfaces are really nice. Everything's soft touch. Uh, and again, this, uh, this felt material I was saying extends across the dashboard around here. There's door pockets, two of them on the lower door pocket and a little spot behind that door latch where you can throw your wallet or your phone or something uh, there. Now this car also has other places to put your devices. Um, around the side, you have your, your headlight stuff. You have your max defrost button, which is next to your headlights. That's something unusual. A lot of cars don't have that there. You also have automatic uh, headlight setting is, is the default every time you get in, which makes 100% sense. Now we'll talk about the screens in a minute. We're just talking about the layout here. And now I'm gonna go through the seat adjustments. So there's just one uh, seat adjustment to go height. There's not like you can adjust the front or back independently, um, but it seems to be pretty good. It raises the whole seat up and then it goes really nice and low, which I love to sit low in a car. So I seem to sit nice and hunkered down in here. You have the backrest position, of course, and then you have one lumbar settings uh, in and out only. So that uh, the seats are, are pretty comfortable, actually. Something that visually I wasn't expecting, um, but actually in practice, they're really nice. Now they're not like racing seats. They're not gonna hold you in and bolster you, but for a long road trip, I, I don't know if you would need any more comfortable seats. Uh, this is this is really nice. No complaints on there. Uh, coming up to the controls here on the steering wheel, you have your turn signals. It's one click will do a triple blink as usual, and then you can go past the point of resistance to leave your turn signal on, and then it will cancel as soon as you come back to center. Nothing unusual there. You have your headlights, front and rear can be controlled independently, which I love. Also automatic wipers, automatic headlights, all of the modern luxuries you would expect. And then you get to your driver assistance buttons here on the steering wheel. You can turn on and set your speed in one click, which is great. You have multiple distance options that you can choose from. And then the last button over here on the steering wheel is your lane keeping aid. The car should keep you right in the middle of the lane 
uh, with Copilot 360, and then we'll be seeing over-the-air updates for vehicles with the prep package. You also have to purchase this particular upgrade, uh, and it will enable hands-free driving with eye tracking, like I was talking about earlier. This is the sensor for it. So this car has the prep package, and that is this little infrared or some sort of sensor that they're using to look at your eyes. You have your start button here on the dashboard, the car will automatically turn off if you leave. It is a setting you can adjust, or you can just turn the car off with this button, which is cool. Other than that, you have this moving uh, center armrest that does not seem to have multiple positions. No, it's just there, but it's fine. Inside the armrest, you have storage, very deep storage. You have a 12 volt power outlet. You have uh, a whole bunch of other stuff that you can put in here. Really quite a large space, which is nice. And then you also have some other controls just in front of that. You have your electronic parking brake. You can hear it clamp down on that wheel back there. You have your hazards lights. You have the automatic parking function where it will back in and parallel park for you. And then you have your shifter. And we'll talk about that in a second as well as to how this all works. Uh, up front here, you have USB-C, USB-A, which is great. You have a great storage area. You can see we're already using it for our equipment, but you can throw your phone down here. You can throw other things as well. And then of course you have the cup holders for the Starbucks. So that's pretty great. Uh, really good HVAC system as well. You can see that everything's just uh, very adjustable with manual controls. Thank you very much. I can just get the air exactly where I want it and leave it. You also, you have two controls for the driver and two ports for the passenger, which is great. And then of course, up top, you have map lights that are all controlled with these buttons up here, and then a fixed entire glass roof. Now, I can't actually drive the Mustang Mach-E with you yet. That will be coming in a future video, so make sure you are staying tuned. But in the meantime, let's walk through all of the settings. I can show you how all this stuff works. So up here, at, you have the driver instrument cluster, which is really nice because it, I, even though I have the steering wheel in the lowest position, I can see everything on this screen, which is really great. So you can see I have my predicted range calculation, which is something we need to talk about because the predicted range calculation here of 174 miles is not a rated range calculation. This isn't based off of EPA consumption numbers like Tesla vehicles. This is based off of your driving history, but also just more than that. So this factors in weather, it factors in the driver, it factors in the drive mode that you're in. And Ford claims that this factors in more uh, uh, variables than any other range calculation. They really believe in having a very accurate predicted range calculation on this vehicle. So when we were cruising on the highway and then set our destination into the city versus somewhere else, our predicted range actually was moving around based off of our destination that we had set. It was pretty cool. You can see just below that we have our battery percentage, something I love to have both of. So we can not only get what the car thinks we're going to get in range, we also know our battery state of charge. And currently we're sitting at 83%. Below that we have our direction of travel, whether or not your auto high beams are on or off, uh, which you can select just by moving the shifter or the uh, light switch forwards a couple times, or I can always just put the lights in uh, forced on and that will also turn off auto high beams. Uh, then we have another button down here, which is saying one pedal driving. I'll show you here in the, the settings here, but there is a setting for one pedal driving, and this is the warning for that. The next one over is saying our parking brake is on. I can turn that off, and ready means the car is on and ready to go. Now I can turn off the driver assistance and just get our ground speed right here. I love that they write ground speed, uh, you know, because where else would you be driving your Mustang? I don't know, but I, I think that's so funny and, and kind of cool. I like the little quirky stuff. On the right side, you have all of your uh, gear positions. So park, reverse, neutral, drive, and then L. Uh, so when you have it in one pedal driving setting, there's no difference between drive and L. But if you are driving it with the one pedal off in one of the normal modes, like whisper, we'll, we'll talk about that. L just increases regen. Uh, but with one pedal, you always get max regen. And I'll be able to show you that again in our next video on Mustang Mach-E. Uh, so that's everything the driver instrument cluster will show you. It'll also show you your driver assistance. It puts a bubble around the car when it's on. It's, uh, it's really intuitive to see how the system is working. Now over here on the main screen, this is really the centerpiece of the car, is this beautiful, beautiful screen with a volume knob sort of molded to the screen. I don't know exactly how they did this, but it's really a good feedback. Listen to that click. 
It's a really nice uh, control, very tactile feedback, and actually a different feedback than the shifter here. So the shifter is a little bit heavier. This is a little bit lighter, but it has a notchier uh, sound to it. I really like the feedback on that button. And this is what you're gonna be looking at and using mainly for your setup of your vehicle. And then while you're driving, a lot of the functions that I'm showing here can be done through voice. So it's one of those things where you set the screen, you either put CarPlay on here or use the built-in UI, and then you just drive and you can glance here, your navigation instructions will show up on the main driver instrument cluster, as well as the, uh, the UI over here on the right side. So it actually seems to be working quite well. You can see we're in downtown Detroit here. So we uh, get 3D mappings of buildings around us. We have uh, a really, really responsive screen. I like that a lot and it seems to be working fantastic. Uh, the, 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 using, uh, the usability of this screen in terms of snappiness is right there and it's on point. It's very cool. So now let's go through some of the functions that you have on the screen. It's broken up really into two or three quadrants. I can lower this screen and now we get some more. So this is how you full screen and unfull screen your main uh, view in the back. So here on the bottom are the applications that we've recently used. And also as we get to use the Mustang Mach-E, it will learn what we frequently use and keep those there in real time. Then we can just go through and see everything this way. Now our temperature controls are just below that. So I can touch up or down here. I can also drag this slider. But if you're driving and you're kind of bumping around, you can just, as soon as you touch this, you can move anywhere on the screen. Well, we're freaking the system out and you can basically have sticky buttons, which is a really nice uh, functionality. And then this will auto clear. You also have your, your heat seating, which you can drag up or down here. And then you also have automatic heat seating, which is great. Seat heating, not heat seating. <laughs> and then you have your heated steering wheel, of course, which is really nice and does get very warm. Let's go into the car settings here. This is where you get into the fun stuff. And the thing that Ford did here, which is really, I think, smart, they have your basic settings, which you can go through. You can pull up your camera. You can pull up your parking assistance. You can pull up your driver assistance. Um, and then from there, you can dive deeper by going into the settings tab. And we're not gonna go through all of these settings here. We'll save that for another day, but you can go really deep down into some of these settings, which is pretty great. So we can go to, let's just say vehicle, for example, just to give you an idea and look at all the stuff that we can do here, even just digging into the alarm system. We can turn the motion sensors off. So if the car is on a ferry, for example, uh, it will turn off the, the motion, motion sensors and the alarm won't go off. But for the most part, your general user is just going to use this control screen. They'll set all those settings once when they take delivery of the car. And it also saves to a user profile uh, so they can save that as theirs. And then someone else can have different settings that's adjusted right here. So you can see we're in Kyle's profile. Mike was driving this car before me. He has his and we can add up to five profiles on the vehicle. So back into our settings mode, you have three main drive modes. You have engage, whisper, and unbridled. Basically what this means is normal, normal comfort, sport, uh, for the layman's terms. Uh, the whisper mode, uh, we are gonna be trying out uh, to start when we do our drive in the future, then we will be moving through the modes. So if you wanna know how the car drives in each of the modes, stay tuned. I just can't tell you quite yet. Uh, in the additional settings, you have one pedal driving, you have uh, propulsion sound, so the car will actually emulate and simulate some noise, and then it will um, change the ambient lighting based off of the mode that you're in. So I think that's really nice, and also the predicted range will jump around based off the mode that you're in, and um, yeah, I think that's, that's pretty smart. So this is the main screen here. You have more apps and options you can use. Of course, Waze can be piped up through Apple CarPlay, which is something I absolutely love. You can check your tire pressures. You can pull up your phone, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which is great. And then it'll tell you everything up here. For example, the temperature is 43 degrees outside and others. So really nice rear view mirror. Moving back to the hard points, you have your garage door openers up here on the uh, driver's sun visor. We can pull that down. And yes, it is lighted. Very nice place to put your cards here as well. It does move over and it does do the visor test. Shout out to the straight pipes on that one. And um, yeah, so that's pretty great. Other than that, everything you would expect is all in here. You have glove box with owner's manual and yeah, it's just a normal car, which makes a lot of sense. Getting in here 
uh, you wouldn't feel intimidated by driving an electric vehicle. You would say, I'm in a Ford product. You're in a Mustang. It feels like a Mustang. You know, looking out over the hood, this uh, notorious uh, strap here with the two, uh, two dash pieces that are raised up, this all feels very Mustang. And um, yeah, it's even the same shifter out of the GT500. So look, I, I gotta say the, the touch points, the overall feel and build quality is, is typical Ford. It's on point. The material usage is great. I especially love this material right here, this sort of uh, felt material. And then everything else is soft. There's no, no hard plastics. Um, this feels really nice. It's, it's good guys. It really is good. Um, yeah, comment below with your thoughts on the Mustang Mach-E. I specifically chose this grabber blue one because it's my favorite color. I hope you like it as well. And uh, very excited to share more with you. Let's talk about Ford Pass. This is the app that comes with the Ford. Come on over. So you can see here in your vehicle the charge level of the screen here. I hope you can see that there. Great. You get a vehicle hotspot, all this stuff. I see. Where are you going? Now we're going to Fort Collins. Again, this is my first time using the app. It's sort of end of day, but I wanted to at least show you some of the capability that it can do. Okay, here we go. It says one day, 18 hour. It planned out all of our charging. It says it would take about five hours of charging time. We'd arrive there at 357. That is a long way, but certainly something that we would do. Now I've hit save and I've sent it to the Ford Mustang. And once everything is set up and working, your trip here should be just programmed right into your navigation on the Mustang Mach-E. And then you're able to rip a long distance road trip with the highest power chargers as the preferred destinations. Other than that, let me show you the key for the Mustang Mach-E. Where is it? It's in my pocket somewhere. And maybe it isn't. No, it's right here next to the sweet and sour McDonald's sauce. <laughs> thanks to Timon because he got hungry while we were filming. Uh, this is the key for the vehicle. You can see here, lock, unlock, panic alarm, forward on the back, nothing unusual here. Uh, just a pretty standard car key. There also is a physical start and stop button uh, that you do turn the car on and off with, and that is this right here. So this glass roof is nice. I know I haven't touched on it in any of my reviews. You don't notice it sitting in the driver's seat unless you look way up, but um, it is in the back seat at least. Gives you a really airy, airy view. And one thing, while you're there, let me go sit in the back and I'll show you how I fit back there. I'm just gonna move some stuff out of the way. Getting in the back seat behind me, one thing I notice is the roof comes down pretty low right here, but once you're inside, like I can't even try and touch the roof. There is about this much room here. Thanks for the lighting. And yeah, so much headroom. Uh, really nice, actually. The one thing is the windows are quite low, so to retain that, that fastback styling, the painted section, it does mean that this, uh, you know, roof line's relatively low. The window, let's see if it goes down all the way. It almost goes down all the way. Right here, if you can see, there's just a little piece of uh, glass sticking up, but that's not the worst offender. We've seen a lot of bad offenders in that area. But yeah, the headroom is most impressive. Look, I'm stretching as far as I can. I'm six foot one. I cannot reach the roof. I have even more than one finger's width, but not quite two when I stretch out as far as I can. That's impressive. They said one of the engineers is six foot eight and can fit back here, which is very impressive. Knee room is really nice too. I'm sitting behind myself and I have, I don't know, three, four inches, three inches of, of knee room, something like this. And, um, and, and even more when the seat contours forward. So back seat room is impressively large and the back seats are relatively comfortable. Uh, they have small amount of bolstering to keep you in place. The front seats are very lightly bolstered. I think it leaves room for a more performance oriented seat if Ford ever decides to make the GT really fun and sporty. They could always put a little bit more of an aggressive seat in there. Uh, but I think this is the perfect compromise for everyday driving back seat unbelievably comfortable uh, and even if I put my head all the way back I'm not hitting uh, the roof back here at all I'm actually touching the headrest which is good uh, for crash worthiness two USB ports back here USB a USB C and rear air vents if you're gonna be ubering or your kids stay nice and cool or your dogs stay nice and cool in the summertime so I'm pleased with this and it also has the same door handle latch that you pull back to open the door so back seats good for me. So there's your quick walk around and tech demonstration of the Mustang Mach-E. What more would you like to see? Let us know and we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.